let's give credit where credit's due. Uh, South Korea or maybe the Netflix um, picking up the South Korean shows have really been knocking it out of the park as of late. You know, I, I got into the hype. I was late to the party on Squid Game. Um, I wasn't sure kind of what I was getting into. I, I didn't really watch a lot of foreign language TV or movies or anything like that. Um, but there was so much hype around Squid Game that I decided to give it a shot. And in doing so kind of unlocked this other part of Netflix that I was avoiding for so long and and feel like I missed the boat on a lot of these shows but the second show I decided to jump into is the new Netflix series I think it's ranked number two in the US and it's called All of Us Are Dead and we're gonna review it we're gonna talk about it we're gonna spoil it so look if you haven't watched this yet stop this video right now go watch all 12 episodes they're hour-long episodes, so it's not the quickest watch uh, in the world. Um, but go watch it, then come back, and let me know if my opinions are silly, if they are if they mesh with what you were thinking when you watched it, or if you are completely have a different take on it than I do. But we're going to get into the mix on All of Us Are Dead, the new Netflix series. Okay. All of Us Are Dead, uh, South Korean show, zombie apocalypse show. I know, I know. It's not like it hasn't been done before. Um, in fact, it's been done to death. But I'll tell you what I like about the show. This show did some things um, that really, you know, are things that, that haven't, at least, at least in what I've seen, haven't really been done in the previous zombie shows. Now, a couple things out of the way. One. Um, I am a Romero purist. As a Pittsburgh kid, um, slow-moving zombies are my jam. Uh, it's silly to think... I, I don't like the fast-moving zombies genre, and this show is definitely fast-moving zombies. So already there's something there. In fact, I think there can be an evolution or a hybrid of the two, whereas zombies, right when they turn, should be able to operate like humans do they can run they can as fast as their legs can carry them but as the wear and tear of a zombie moves on they eventually turn into the slow plodding thing and no one's ever really explored that um obviously there's deterioration that occurs you know as you get beyond the years but the idea is is that zombies have human frailties uh, obviously beyond their never-ending quest for food um namely humans um but uh and i guess some animals too as we've seen in other ones but uh they have the same frailties as a human they they are you know if you stab them in the head shoot them in the head um obviously if you shoot them in the limbs or anything it doesn't do anything but at the same time arms can fall off legs can fall off and, and things like that so um you have to kind of decide whether you're okay with fast-moving zombies. I'm okay with it. It's just I'm a purist um, as someone who likes slow-moving. So you have to kind of check that in initially. Now, uh, watching these shows, uh, there's two different ways to watch them, I guess. Um, you can watch them on Netflix uh, with English dubs. Or you can watch them as Korean language with English subtitles. Um, so I do watch it with the English dubs. The the acting, uh, the the English actors, and I get that they're getting, they're not getting like the, and I'm sure there's something lost in translation between Korean to English, um, but there's definitely a dialogue barrier at times. I don't feel it takes away enough from the show for my enjoyment. And in fact, I like kind of the cheesy American dialogue. Um, and maybe that's just me. Maybe people watch it in Korean. Um, I've grown very partial to the English dubs over there. Um, I, even though I think the acting, um, the, the voice acting, I will say the English voice acting, is overly, like, dramatic, like, at times. You know, it just seems like they're, that they're, you know, like, it's it just, it's not the greatest but i feel like for some for some reason i just adapt to that show you know i respond to it better i guess than than watching something in a foreign language and just reading my way through it to each its own 
you know, you might have an opinion. You might want to watch it in just the, the regular language with the English subtitles, and that's fine. I feel it doesn't take away from mine. Now, the one thing I will say that this show does, that it seems that no other zombie show or movie or thing that I can remember does, um, or at least they flesh it out, whereas other ones touch on it, is they get into uh, two things. They get into the origins of the reason why the virus occurred. And, you know, there's a very real, um, as someone who's had kids or someone remembers days in school, you know, of dealing with friends that went through this and, and other things that went through this. And look, I said we're getting into, getting into spoilers. This is not a spoiler-free review. Um, but basically the whole hook of this is this guy was a science teacher and he developed a virus. Um, basically he developed a... a it was really a thing to attempt to make his kid stronger against bullying because his kid was being bullied and really st accidentally started a zombie apocalypse. Now, you can say that's not a great um, origin story, but of all the zombie shows and movies and things like that that you can remember, what one had any origin story? The idea is it just happened. Here this happened... Someone was infected and this happened. I remember a big hype around Fear the Walking Dead where they're like, we're taking you from the first person that was infected and we're showing you how it all started. Yeah, except for they never showed how that first person was infected. Just that person woke up infected. Like they never explained it well enough and they never gave a reason why this occurred. This at least is a reason why this occurred. Now, I'm sure that other people have stumbled upon viruses before, so this is not out of the realm of possibility that this occurred, but obviously the dude got in over his head. Um, but the, the other thing that I liked that the show did, beyond the origin story, was it touched on... Most zombie little things have a central setting, and this show certainly does. Um, the central setting is a high school, uh, and our central characters, for the most part, are high school kids um, of different backgrounds, you know, different, um, uh, you know, just kind of coming together to unite against this thing. But the cool thing that I like that this show did is that it went from the initial inception of a zombie apocalypse and followed it to almost the, not really the conclusion of it, but followed it from the initial inception to the central setting being the school to the outside world and how the outside world dealt with this situation you know going into just just touching on things like religion and economics you know the stock market crashed because there was a major catastrophe and you know how religions were handled this and how the military had to handle this and how you know local police had to handle this and, and just really a a general understanding of the world entirety versus your central character. And what I like, it seems that almost every zombie show does this for good and bad, but you know, no one has ever kind of hit that sweet spot like this show did where they, they'll have a character, um, say the walking dead. Okay. The walking dead, there's a main character and Something happens, you know, a little background, a little exposition on that main character. Um, just get a little bit of background on him. And then some situation occurs, and it's flash forward. And they'll flash forward weeks. And so it'll be like the origin of the zombie apocalypse. Maybe you'll get a little tease. Like the remake of Dawn of the Dead, or even the original Dawn of the Dead. Kind of gave you a tease on how society is starting to break down. And, Dawn of the, and the remake of Dawn of the Dead did it one better. Where it's showing how it's happening in like a neighborhood. And Fear of the Walking Dead also did that neighborhood aspect. But never a society as a whole that I felt this show did, that no other show did, is where they actually showed all parts of society breaking down in like a city. So they show the beginning of it, and then there's like a flash forward that you know and this is this is not this show this is most zombie shows so they'll show a flash forward into like here's where we're at currently you know i've been three months i've been on the road or three weeks or however many to the point where you know there's just abandoned cars on the street and everything's broken down but in this show 
it's taking you from the initial infection, some one person being infected, to infecting other characters, to infecting thousands of people and how an infection can spread um in this case a zombie infection and man did i enjoy that uh, a lot of people said uh, you know I, I read i watched reviews of things as well and they said that you know other like subplots didn't really fill out maybe there was some filler in the show and while i agree with that to an extent i will say that man they um they fleshed out the world um in, in the way most shows don't seem to do um, especially when they've grown tiresome, like The Walking Dead. Uh, the Walking Dead, more recently, not saying in origin, the beginning of Walking Dead is terrific. I'm saying The Walking Dead currently, where they introduce characters you do not care about and then kill them off and you're supposed to care about them. That's not really how this works. Um, so the idea of this thing is you're introduced to characters on this show and then they flesh them out a little bit. They get into situations. They get into undertones. They even get into situations during, you know, their plight, during their, you know, when they're stuck in a situation that adds to their character arc that doesn't always seem to fly on other zombie shows and movies. You know, most of the time it's just fighting against people and then you get, like, the maybe the lead character... And maybe a couple other sub characters get something, and the rest of them get nothing. This one, at least, almost every character has some moment, some situation, something that adds to their story. And I thought it was told very well. Um, so I do like that they had a, the zombie outbreak from the beginning, um, and how it took over a city, how it just took over a city. Um, that was, I would say, it was rather unique. I mean, it, you know, you're only. It's only implied in other zombie shows, or only other, like, teased upon in other zombie shows. Like, think of it like the movie Independence Day. The movie Independence Day, um, say the aliens kind of hovered over the cities, and then there was a flash forward, and it's like, they wiped us all out, and whatever. That's basically all zombie shows. It's like, it tells you what happened after the fact. This one is telling you through the entire story. I thought it was great. Um, the other thing that they did, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a little biased in this regard. I would hate if The Walking Dead did something like this now. But in this case, because this is an origin story, it kind of works. It kind of works because it is doing something different with the genre. In that, And I'll tell you what made me justify it in my head. They, in this show, had a situation where they introduced a human zombie zombie hybrid um it, and it happened in a couple times with a couple people and so basically it's a uh person that's turned uh and they do justify it with some um uh like a cutscene, kind of like the one line throwaway um but they do kind of justify it in a sense but it's basically someone's bitten they're infected but they don't turn full zombie so they only turn part of the way zombie. Basically, they have zombie strengths without zombie weaknesses. And they can talk, they can interact, they can do things um, that the zombies cannot do. So I look at it like the movie Blade. Uh, for those unfamiliar, uh, it's a Marvel movie. It's going to, in the next couple years, it's going to be part of the MCU because um, they're remaking it. But Blade is that the character Blade was a human vampire hybrid he had all of vampire strengths none of vampire weaknesses so that's how i justified it in my mind um to where they have these characters certain characters that had this ability now the cool thing about these characters that have this ability is is that it seems that every time you attempted to kill them they get right up and move along um and what made me, it almost made me think, like, what are the limitations of the human body? Like, how much could one, it's not like a Terminator, you know, it's not like a, a metal machine, it's just a human, they have frailties as well. Obviously, there was a, there was some f way to heal, but they never really, the one thing they never delved too deep on is just that they, they could heal, but never truly how they did heal. Um, and what, you know, because it seems like they didn't heal completely. Um, they always were kind of jacked up. Like, you know, in one case, 
this guy threw the bully kid the bully kid is the one that actually became uh this like blade level zombie and in several instances he got thrown out of the school through a window through the roof um so you're falling say five stories or ten stories and you know you're he wakes up and he's jacked up or you know he gets something in the eye and he's jacked up his eye never heals and his body never truly heals like he's still kind of jacked up but it heals enough that he can like function so that you know i would like to see that fleshed out a bit more but i was intrigued by the um the new take uh like i said if the walking dead did this now having not shown it for you know how many hundred seasons like it's been on uh it would be irritating but the fact that this occurred in an origin story I can somewhat get behind it especially because it's something kind of fresh in the zombie genre um so here's the thing with this compared to say like a walking dead um early seasons on you know there's there's not really a character like a Rick Grimes character who you just got behind from the jump obviously there are characters that are great characters um, and there are characters that are characters you'd love to hate. Um, the main villain, you know, I guess you could say, is a character that you hate and you want him to die. But that's a great testament to his character. Um, that you want him to die. You want him to be killed. <laughs> and so, you know, that... And some of the kids, um, you know, some of the kids, uh, you know, are characters you can support and get behind. Although they make inexplicably dumb kid decisions this is not like a situation where you know in the walking dead certain people make decisions and they're terrible decisions as well but obviously they're adults these are high school kids and they're high school kids that occasionally will reveal dumb things at dumb times or do dumb things at dumb times you know where they're like reveal like a crush on someone or they'll argue about grades or they'll argue about when you know stuff means nothing nothing once you get to the real world and and would mean nothing to someone in say a zombie apocalypse but they're still arguing about it you know and that's kid stuff that's almost kid things um so you can't put them in the same thing as like someone like an adult um that you know is in the walking dead that does dumb things but the zombie genre is is kind of built around people making dumb decisions otherwise too many people would survive uh there's a point in every zombie show where you have to yell at the screen or slap your head or be like what are you doing that's part of the fun so i don't i don't um i don't begrudge bad decisions um but yeah keep in mind in this one they're high school kids and they have high school kid um you know things that they worry about that you know obviously there's things that you worried about when you were in high school that you could care less now i had a ton of that i could care less about there was stuff in high school that was like the most important thing in my existence that now looking back at it is like wow that was really stupid and these kids are that same way um so you know there is a you know there is something to be said for that um now i will say uh in regards to um a zombie show most of the time it seems zombie shows handle a character turning into a zombie in roughly the same way is that that character gets bit they're either trying to hide it or whatever. But when they start turning, like, they're in a situation where there's, like, a bunch of zombies around them. And the zombies kind of turn around and they shamble away. And you go, like, oh, that character's turning now. Or you see the character die and then they, like, reanimate. But in this show, I'll tell you what I liked. They reanimate or they turn into zombies like, um, the only thing I can compare it to is shows when people turn into werewolves. It's violent, uh, the way they turn into zombies. Like, they're, you hear their bones crack and stuff like that. Like, they're flailing around on the ground. You hear their bones start cracking. You know, you, like you, there, there's, a, there's a transformation that occurs. More than I can say in any other show. So I did dig that a lot. And this show is violent. It's violent. I mean, people are getting, you know, almost every episode, you know, you're getting, there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of gore. Uh there's a lot of swearing actually <laughs> but that's you know it's an ma rated show and it's it's great i i thought it was great um so 
definitely one um, that you should check out for yourself. I did my one of my favorite funny parts, and this is legitimately, um, you know, true. This would absolutely happen if there was something that occurred. Let's say, you know, in this world we live in in 2022, who knows what the hell's going to happen, to be honest with you. But let's just say, for just, let's have fun with me for a second. It's 2022, and there occurs a zombie apocalypse. Uh, what's the first thing that someone would do? And they addressed it in this show. That's right, of course. They had a guy that's a YouTuber with a following go into the infected area and live stream. Uh, <laughs> live stream to get views uh, because he wanted to see the zombies firsthand. Absolutely someone would do that. Would I do that? No, no, I'm not that. Uh, this is a hobby for me as a YouTuber. Um, but kudos to the person that would do that because guaranteed someone would do that. Um, but it was interesting. It was funny. It made me laugh. Uh, then there are elements of the show that will make you laugh. Like there's just subtle little things here or there. And like I said, in between the inexplicable decisions and uh, the hopelessness and it's kind of a mixed bag. There are weird moments of people saying something silly or doing something silly that makes you laugh. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I, I, I enjoyed the whole hook of it. Um, but you have to keep in mind, you know, when everybody seems to be like, you know, all oh, these kids, they made these decisions and they're, they're, they made a lot of stupid decisions. They made certain decisions that I wouldn't have come up with. Like one of the coolest things that I saw that, that I don't remember seeing on any other show or whatever is they did a situation and they did it a couple different times. Um, one better than the other, mainly when they were in the gym closer to the end, where they had a mobile barricade. They had this thing on wheels that they could go around and it blocked the zombies off to get to a door. Interesting. Unique take. Um, like I said, I don't remember seeing anything like that. Obviously, when people have access to vehicles and cars and, and things like that they can do things a horse they can do things differently but if you're stuck in like a gym or you're stuck inside somewhere and you have a mobile barricade that you can like use to stop them or at the same time get out i thought that was a unique take and what i will say is that because it was in a high school that these kids didn't have access to say like a cache of weapons or machetes or anything they're using everything they can to throw at these people you know obviously they end up running into a situation where they had an archery team and those people did you know had bows with never-ending supply of bows among them and that's fine um but most of the time they're just throwing like books they're throwing whatever they can at some of these people sometimes just whatever they can get you know sharpen into a stick or throw it off a wall or whatever um, but man, I, like I said, I enjoyed an interesting, different take of the zombie uh, genre. But it, like I said, there, there are times when the tropes are the tropes. There are times when the same stupid things that happen in all zombie movies happen here. It's not perfect by any stretch. But man, I enjoyed, I really enjoyed the watch. And now it was 12 episodes. They're hour-long episodes. That's 12 hours long. That's some time you're going to commit into this show. Um... Does it need 12 episodes? Not necessarily, but I do appreciate the the world that they placed it into. I do appreciate, you know, like I said, some of the subplots were kind of left off and, and never really, like, followed up on. Some of them were. Were they all done in, in unique, special ways? No. Were they all done in ways that were satisfying? No. But I enjoyed what they were trying to do. I enjoyed the hook of the outside world. I enjoyed the military response and how they handled it and how they cleared out the area. You know, that is something that probably would, would happen. Let's not kid ourselves, you know, like it'd be a situation where they could gather all of them together and drop a missile on their heads. Um, you know, without thinking about potential, you know, survivor casualties. So I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, they kind of did a small hook into a season two. I would be interested in that. But as for, uh, All of Us Are Dead Season 1, if it is just a Season 1, uh, it's worth your time. It is worth your effort. I give it 4 out of 5 stars. I thought it was really, really good. Um, I suggest you watch it if you haven't. And if you haven't watched it and you've sat here and watched me ruin some of it for you, I mean, I teased around some certain. I didn't kind of spoil everything. But 
definitely check it out and let me know your thoughts on it. Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this show. Whether you watched it, whether you didn't watch it, whether this, you know, me talking about it convinced you to watch it, even though I spoiled certain elements for you. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Like to support me on Patreon like John Bailey did. You can do so. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt, a Tom was here t-shirt. You can do so at Spreadshirt, as well as links to my eBay store, Facebook page, Instagram, Clubhouse, and the Pennsylvania Autograph Collectors Association. Links are in the description below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Do you have a show that you want me to review? Leave a message down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts on All of Us Are Dead. Would you watch a season two? Did you get through season one? I would love to have your feedback. Let me know. But guys, thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, we will see you soon. But until then, bye everyone.